Today we are going to paint this bold and fierce sunset. So the two colors you will need for the sky is vermilion red and crimson. I will be mixing those two colors together to get that bright red. And to add in the details, I'll be using the same color and I will be mixing a little of purple into that. And to add the moon and the reflection, you will need white gouache or white watercolor. All right, let's start. This one is a sample piece I did just to be sure with the colors. So I'm going to start by applying an even coat of water onto the paper. Apply a clean coat of water onto the entire paper. We don't need any pencil sketch here. We'll be painting the sky and the water together. Okay, I have applied an even coat of water onto the entire paper. Now let's start painting. Now to paint the sky and the water, I'm gonna mix vermilion red and crimson. So I have a nice reddish orange or orangish red, whatever you wanna call it. It's a very pretty red, which has a pink tone and an orange tone together. I will show you a swatch of the color I made. This is the color. You could see how gorgeous that shade is. So I mixed vermilion red and crimson. I used equal amount of both the shades and that's the shade we'll be working with. Now let's add that color onto the paper. First we need to add a gradient wash of this color we created. We need a darker tone on the top and the bottom and over the middle we need a lighter tone. Looks like my water is kind of dried. Never mind, I will quickly dip my brush in a little of water and blend that well. So the first step is to create a smooth gradient of this color which is dark on the top and the bottom and light over the center. You could also try the same with purple or a blue if you are someone who don't like red so you can follow your favorite color. Okay. We have our background wash ready. Now I'm going with a little more brighter tone of the same red and I'm going to apply that on the top and on the bottom. Just making the color a little more intense. All right. Now you could see we have a lighter tone in the middle and a brighter tone over the top and the bottom. Now that lighter area is where we have our horizon line an imaginary horizon line. Now I'm going to switch to my round brush and I'm going to add the clouds. So onto the same color, I'm going to mix my rose of ultramarine to get a darker tone of this red and using that color, I'm going to apply the clouds. You can go with any of the purple that you have got. Make sure you're going with a more reddish purple. We don't want a bluish tone in the sky. So that's a shade. Before adding the clouds, I will quickly show you a swatch of the color I made. And this is the color. You can see it's a nice red which has a purple tone. Okay, now let's add the clouds. I need to be very quick. Looks like my background is kind of drying. I will start from the top. I'm simply dropping the paint onto the wet background and creating the clouds. I will be going with a darker tone just over the top and over to the bottom where I have the lighter tone. I will be going with a lighter tone of the same shade when I'm adding the clouds. I made the color intense by adding a little more rose of ultramarine. And I'm going to add that darker tone just over the top. Otherwise it won't stand out from that bright red background. Now let's go with the lighter clouds. But before that, I'll just make my background wet. Looks like everything has dried and if I add the clouds on this layer, it won't spread. I will get a dry and rough patch. Okay, so I'm taking my flat brush. I dipped my brush in a little of water and I'm trying to blend that color with that middle area. Now because I started blending the colors from the bottom, my brush will have a lot of paint. So make sure when you're reaching the top, you need to clean your brush properly. Otherwise, you won't be having that lighter tone in the middle. The beauty of this painting lies in that gradient. We need the brighter tones over the top and the bottom and that lighter tone in the middle to get that sea and the sky merging effect. 
Now I'm switching back to my round brush and I'm going to add the remaining of the clouds. I loaded my brush with that purplish red and I'm removing that excess water from my brush. Now adding the clouds because I don't want the clouds to spread a lot when I'm applying here. I want some smaller sized clouds and that's why I'm removing the excess water from my brush. If my brush has a lot of water, it will spread a lot and create those bigger clouds. I want very tiny clouds over here. You can see the way I'm dropping them. Compared to the ones on the top, they are very tiny. I'll just add a few more here with a brighter tone. All right, so that's our sky. Now before the bottom part dries, I'm going to add in the ripples. So the size of the clouds totally depend on the amount of water your brush has got. So if you want a smaller size cloud, you can always dab your brush on a paper towel and remove the excess amount of water. The color will stay the same. It is just that you'll be working with a lesser water content. Now using the same shade, I'm adding the ripples. I'm just adding lines like this onto the wet background. You can see they are nicely spreading into the background and making them look very soft. My lines are not looking too sharp. That is just because my background is wet. Again, don't work with too watery paint. If you feel like your paint is too watery, dab it on a paper towel and work with a paint which has less water content. If your paint is too watery, when you're adding these lines, they will spread too fast and it won't appear like lines. Now when you're adding these lines, make sure you're leaving a little gap in between. So you can see here, between every line, I have a little of red gap. This is what makes your C look more beautiful. Don't apply them close to each other. Make sure you have a little of red gap in between. Now I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going with a lighter tone and I'm adding a few lighter lines over the background. So wherever you have a darker base layer, you are going with a darker tone and wherever you have a lighter base layer, we are going with lighter tones. Same for the sky and for the water. And also with the size of your lines and the clouds. Onto the top, I added bigger clouds and when I'm closer to the horizon line, I went in with smaller sized clouds. Same with the water. Over to the bottom, which is closer to me, I went in with bigger ripples. I added a thick line and when I'm over to the horizon line, I'm going with very thin and delicate lines, which is light in tone. You can see how bright and bold our sky and water is looking. Now everything has completely dried and I'm switching to my smaller size brush. And I'm going with a much more deeper tone of the same shade by mixing more Rose of Ultramarine. Now in between those bigger ripples we created, I'm going to add in some thin lines as well. Just over to the bottom. I'm just adding few lines because these lines will give your C a more finished look. Don't add them closer to the horizon line, just add a few lines towards the bottom. Go with very thin line. I'm really loving this color combination. When I tried the sample piece, I didn't like it much. But still I thought I'll give it a try. Now I'm really loving the colors. It looks so bold and fierce. Okay, I'll quickly show you how I added the ripples again. You could see how easily we created that depth in our painting. I'll take a scrap piece of paper and I'll just apply the ripples on this dry paper. Whenever you're adding the ripples, make sure your background is a little wet and your paint is not too watery and add lines like this. Press and release your brush. And again, add a line, then press and release your brush. So work on this combination. At some area, you can go with a thicker line and at some places you could go with a thinner line. So these are the ripples which are closer to you. Over to the horizon line, you should be going with thin and delicate lines. So over to the bottom, your ripples will be a combination of thick and thin lines. And in between, you can add this thin lines, which we did right now, to make your C look more refined. 
just add these thin lines with a more darker tone. Now you could try the same thing on any color combination to paint a C. Okay, now I'm going to switch to white watercolor and I'm going to add a tiny moon. I will be adding the moonlight as well and that's going to be the last step. I'm going to add it right at the center, a teeny tiny moon. Okay, so that's our tiny moon. Now it's time to add the reflection. That's the last step remaining. I'm really loving the way this painting is progressing. Now let's add the reflection. This will be the way I'll be adding the reflection. I just tried it with a white gel pen. I'm using my smaller size brush. This is size number two. Go with any of your detailing brush or size zero or any other brush which has a nice pointed tip. Add in some white lines right underneath the moon. We need some thin and delicate lines and that is why I asked you to go with a detailing brush. We don't need any thick and bold lines. You can see the way I'm adding the lines. They are very thin. Over to the top you can go with a little more thicker and bolder white and as I come down I'm making the lines more thin and delicate compared to the top. And that's it. We are done with our painting. Now it's time to remove the masking tape. And here is our bold and fierce sunset. I hope you all had a great time painting this one with me.